Beginner dropshippers are always afraid to get into paid advertising because they feel like they need this huge budget to be able to make it work, and that's just far from the truth. Because the only way for you to be able to have a sustainable business and to get the financial freedom that you're looking for is to run paid ads. Now, organic is cool and all because you can, you know, order your product in, make some videos with it, post it onto social media, but you're also heavily relying on the algorithm to generate revenue. And again, that's just not sustainable. And in this video, I'm gonna go over my full low budget TikTok ads testing strategy. So that way I can help a bunch of you guys get your first sales with your dropshipping businesses. And this is a proven strategy that you can start using today and it's helped countless of my students be able to generate thousands of dollars with their dropshipping businesses. So if that excites you, I would greatly appreciate it if you stay to the end of the video because I know it's gonna be valuable. Drop a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated. And if you're also a beginner out there that's looking for a like-minded community full of other dropshippers on their dropshipping journey, feel free to go down to the description and sign up for my free dropshipping Discord server. And without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so let's get right into it. So. As you can see, we're on a fresh TikTok ads manager. If you don't have a TikTok ads account, you're gonna to need to make one to be able to follow the, uh, follow the tutorial, obviously. So come over to ads.tiktok.com. You're gonna click on get started and just fill it out. Sign up for a TikTok ads account so that way you can start advertising. So once you do that, you'll have a screen similar to mine. Just make sure you come over to the campaign tab. And now what I'm gonna do is I've never really shown my exact column setup for my TikTok ads manager. Um, you need to be able to read your data effectively if you wanna be able to run ads the right way. Um, so you need to know what KPIs to look at. So I'm gonna show you my exact column setup. I'm not gonna go into depth of every single um, you know, KPI here, but um, that way you know exactly uh, you know what you should be looking at. So I'm gonna click on Jaden's columns. All you have to do is just click on default columns. You're gonna click on custom columns to make your own, but I'm just gonna click on mine right here. And as you can see, I have 29 columns selected. You can go ahead and search if there's something else that you wanna add, you can add it right to your column setup. But this is the exact setup that I have right here. I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys like screenshot this. I'll give you like a couple seconds here. And then I'll also give you a couple seconds here. So um, yeah, so these are the 29 different KPIs that I look at when the, they're not all KPIs, but um, majority of them are. So like CPC, CPM, impressions, CTR, um, you know, you have your cost per acquisition, your purchase ROAS, your total purchase, cost per purchase, value per purchase, your total add to carts, so on and so forth. So yeah, these are the columns that I look at to be able to make the best possible decisions with my ads. Um, and I highly recommend that you do the same. So all you have to do is just come down to the bottom, name it whatever you want, and then make sure you have this checked for save as preset column, and then click on confirm and you're good to go. Now it's time for you to launch your first ad. So what do you gotta do? First thing you gotta do is go over to this create button right here. Now you're gonna see your advertising objective. This is going to be basically what you're trying to do as an advertiser, okay? For us e-commerce store owners, we're trying to get sales. We're trying to get people to our website and to purchase our products. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on website conversions. You don't need to worry about traffic, reach, or any of that. Those are all different. Obviously, if you had a lead generation business, you'll click on lead generation, okay? So we're gonna click on website conversions. And then we're gonna keep smart campaign, uh, smart performance campaign turned off. We're gonna scroll down and for our campaign name, we just need to name this something so that way we can stay organized once we have a ton of ads running in our ads manager because it can get kind of crazy. So make sure you name this something where you'll know um, so that way you can start organized. So what I do is I just name my campaign name the name of my product. So I'll just put product name. You put the name of your product there and that's good enough, okay? Um, then we're gonna turn on campaign budget optimization. We're gonna set this to $50. Now, you're gonna need to be able to spend $50 on a test. If you can't spend at least $50 on a test, then entrepreneurship may not be for you right now, okay? And I have to say it like that because this is fairly inexpensive. You spend 50 bucks, if you get no sales, boom, we cut it and we move on to the next product. Most likely it was something maybe on your landing page, maybe it is the product, or maybe it's just your ads suck, okay? But all in all, if you spend 50 bucks, you should know whether or not, like what that problem is. So really quickly, just to explain what a CBO is, you're basically telling TikTok that you want them to spend $50 throughout whatever advertisements you give them. So we always test with at least three ads. So TikTok is gonna spend $50 within those three ads and they don't have to spend all the budget on one. They can spend $48.50 on one of them and then spend only you know a dollar or 50 cents on the other two. 
okay? So you're basically letting TikTok handle the budget and disperse it to the best performing ad sets. And with how powerful the TikTok algorithm is, I trust that it's gonna make the best decision for me. And later on, when we go on to the ad set level, I'll show you exactly what I mean because you can also set your budget, but you can also set your budget on the ad set level as well. And I'll be sure to explain that once we get to the next step, what that means, okay? So all you have to do now is just click on continue. All right, so now we're on the ad group portion of our campaign. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to name it, okay? So again, just try to keep it simple so that way it's organized. So what I do is I'll typically just do something like open targeting because I don't do interest targeting, but if you're gonna target an interest, for example, you would just put that interest here. So that way you know exactly what you're targeting. Um, I'll also do like, you know, what countries or maybe the age groups that I'm targeting. It just kind of depends on the product and what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do US and Canada because we're gonna target both and then I'll just leave it at that. For the data connection, you're gonna to wanna to select your pixel. You should have already have made a pixel once you tied your TikTok ads to your Shopify account. So you should already have one. If not, just go ahead and create one. For the optimization event, we're always going to do complete payment. Now for the placements, you wanna click on select placement and you always wanna remove the global app bundle and Pangle as well. Um, and then I've also been experimenting with including the search results as well. Um, feel free to test this if you want to. I'm just gonna keep this checked for now. Um, advanced settings, I always turn off user comments because people will say stupid shit on your ads and then it just messes up the ad, okay? So I just keep it off, right? So turn that off. Um, video downloads, you don't want anybody downloading your ads. And then for video sharing, I don't mind people sharing my ads because it's gonna push it in the algorithm anyways. Are you looking to boost your Shopify store's performance and save money at the same time? Meet Day Beautify, the high converting Shopify theme that's designed to skyrocket your sales without breaking the bank. Now, Day Beautify makes it so easy for you to install their theme onto your Shopify store. It literally just takes a few minutes. So once you get signed in, you're gonna see a screen just like this. And all you have to do to add this to your Shopify store is just come over to download theme. So now all you have to do is just click on download theme. It should ask you what your dot my Shopify URL is. Um, I already have this installed on my store. Um, so if it asks you, just make sure you put that. Then you're gonna click on the fresh install. You can choose default or you can choose one of the fashion stores or a baby store. You can view those here if you want to. I just choose the default store and then I click continue. So once it's finished, it's gonna put a zip file onto your computer. You're gonna need this if you wanna be able to put it on your Shopify store, which I'll show you right now. So just head on over to your Shopify store, click on online store and then themes, and then you're gonna see your theme library. All you have to do is just click on add theme and then upload zip file. And then you're gonna take that zip file that was just downloaded and place it here. And now you'll see your Shopify store editor and it looks way different. And that's because it got a massive upgrade. Because if you see right here on the left side, there are a ton of add-ons that you can add right to your Shopify store within seconds. And to add these specific add-ons, it's actually really simple. You just come back to the Day Beautify site, click on add-ons, and then here are all the add-ons that you'll have access to right outside the box. And just to show you how crazy this is, if you come down to the bottom, they have upsells, upsell bundles, they have sticky ads to cart, and so many more apps. And to be honest with you, if you were to get each and every single one of these like separately as apps, your Shopify plan would be through the roof. You'd be paying so much money. And with Day Beautify, I'm able to make high converting Shopify stores just like this each and every single time. So if you're ready to transform your Shopify store, I highly recommend Day Beautify. I'll be sure to leave a link at the top of the description. That'll give you 30 days to try this out 100% risk-free to see if it's a good fit for you. All right, so now we're heading into the targeting section of our ad set. So just scroll down to demographics and we're gonna add another country here. So we're gonna also target Canada as well. Um, you can mess around with this. I do this as well. Sometimes I'll target just Canada or I'll target just the United States or the United Kingdom. Um, just do keep in mind that if you have a regular TikTok ads account, you can only target the United States and Canada right now. You can't target the big, uh, the big five. Um, the only way to do this is to actually get an agency account. Um, if you want me to make a video about that, I can do that as well. Um, anyways, if you scroll down to age, I always keep it at 18 plus. I never do 13 to 17 because you don't want to target, um, you know, little kids. They're not going to be able to purchase your product anyways, and you're going to be wasting your ad dollars. Okay. So, um, make the best decision that you possibly can. If you have a product that's, you know, more so for an older demographic, then target people that are older. Okay. You have to make that best decision for yourself, but majority of products are going to be good on 18 plus.
Now, same thing for gender. Gender is going to be the exact same thing, but you'd be really surprised. I've sold tons of beauty products. I love the beauty niche and I'll target all genders because you'll be surprised on how many males, um, you know, will buy this for their woman or buy this for their mom, their sister, whatever the case may be. Okay. So again, make the best possible decision, but majority of the time I like to keep it on all. Now for languages, make sure that obviously English is selected. I believe it's just on all right now. You wanna make sure that it's just on English. And then you can scroll down to interests and behaviors. Now, a lot of people ask me, do you run interests when you're running ads? And my answer is simple, no, I do not. A couple years ago, yes, I always choose interests and I never did abroad. But now I only do broad. The AIs for these platforms are just insane. They know who your ideal audience is and you don't have to worry about this, okay? Um, you can just let TikTok, Facebook, Facebook, you know, or Facebook do its thing. But I want to show you anyway. So if you just click on interests and behaviors, they do have interests for like the pets and beauty. So we can just go to pets, we can click inside there. They get a little bit more specific pet food, pet health care, pet household products. Now, if you want to make a separate campaign, once you find your winning product and start testing some interest, there's nothing wrong with that. When it comes to advertising, it's all about split testing. Okay. So um, I don't recommend just not doing it, but when you're doing your initial test, you just, you don't need it. Okay. And it, you, you just don't. So I would just leave it open. All right. So for the device, um, you can mess with this if you want to say, if you're selling a product like an iPhone case and you only wanted to target people who, you know, are on iOS, you can target people like that. Now that's, you know, something that I would highly recommend. Okay. Um, and so you can go through these, typically the products I sell, um, I don't ever have to mess with this. I just keep it on all. Now we're on budget and schedule, okay? So I told you at the beginning of the video um, when I talked about CBO campaigns that I would get back to it once we got to this section. So this right here would be open. If you didn't choose CBO campaign in the beginning, you'd be setting the budget at the ad group or the ad set level. So I'd be able to put my budget here and I would be able to disperse them how I want to. So that's the difference, okay? So if I had three advertisements, I'd be able to set $20 campaigns for each and every single one of them. And TikTok would spend the entire budget per ad set. They wouldn't just go and choose which one they think is doing the best. They'll spend the entire budget again on each and every ad, um, on each and every ad set. So that's the difference. Hopefully that made sense. So anyways, uh, we already have our budget set, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, all we have to do is just schedule it. So just click on schedule. And then you're gonna set it for the next day at midnight. You always wanna run your ads for the next day at midnight. It's just something I've been doing for years now. You wanna give these platforms a full 24 hours to be able to spend your budget. So we're gonna click the next day. We're gonna click on the time and we're just gonna do uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is just midnight. Click OK and then OK. Now, I used to not do day partying, but I've been doing it a lot now lately. So day partying is basically you're telling the platform, hey, I don't want you to spend my budget until this time, okay? So typically what I'll do is like seven to midnight, which is just seven in the morning to midnight, or I'll do eight to midnight, whatever the case may be, okay? Because I just find that it works better. Um, so I'm gonna keep it at that. Now for everything else, bidding and optimization, you don't have to worry about it as long as it just matches what I have here on the screen, you're good to go. Same thing for the advanced settings as well. So you can go ahead and just click on continue. All right, so now we're on the ad portion of our campaign, which is my favorite part because I'm able to customize exactly what my customers are gonna see before they go to my website. So the first option here, smart creative, you can keep this off, I typically do so. Um, for the ad name, again, there's no right or wrong answer. I just like to do just video one, video two, video three, etc. Now for your identity, okay, you're going to need to create a new custom identity. This is going to be basically um, your little icon here when a customer sees your ad. Okay, so you can customize this to whatever you want. A lot of people will do some creative stuff and actually make it look like it's a real person. So that's something you can test with as well. Um, but typically, I'll just put my brand name. So just create new identity, put your brand name here, um, upload a logo and then click create. All right, so the next thing we have to do is upload our ad creative so that way we can customize them, add the call to actions, et cetera, right? So what we need to do is click on upload and click and drag all of your creatives into here. I always test with at least three creatives, so make sure you upload at least three. All right, so now we added all three of our videos. As you can see, we have three here right on the left side panel. Um, so now what we can do 
is customize our text. So the text is going to be this little ad copy right here before someone clicks on your ad. Now this is, can only be between one and a hundred characters. So you need to keep it short and it needs to be your offer. So let's just say, for example, our offer is um, buy, buy one, get one free today only. Okay, so that could be an example of text that you can put here. Or if you're, yours is buy one and get a free gift, then you can put that. Or, you know, it's 75% uh, off of everything on the site until midnight. Whatever your offer is, like, just put that there. Okay, so that's what we're going to roll with for this is buy one, get one free today only. And then for the call to action, I always just delete these and I select my own. And I always select ones that have buying intent. So um, order here, buy now, shop here, get your order now, shop now, order is yours now um, buy it purchase it now shop today and I think that's good enough order now okay and yeah we're good with that okay so those are all ones that have you know something with like purchase now or order here whatever the case may be so I just select those and now for the URL this needs to be the link to your product page and I want to say that one more time it needs to be the link to your product page. Do not put your home page, do not put your collections page, or contact us, don't put anything but the product page. You want to create the least amount of friction for your customers. So that way, once they click this order here button or whatever it is here, goes to your website and they can just purchase. There's no extra steps, okay? And so make sure you paste that link here. Now we need to go ahead and paste in our URL. So this is going to be the URL to our product page. And I want to say it one more time the link to your product page. Do not make it your home page, your collections page, your contact us page. It needs to be the product page. And the reason for this is because you wanna create the least amount of friction for your customers. You want them to be able to click on your ad, go right to the website and be able to purchase, okay? You don't wanna create any extra steps. So put your link here and make sure you always preview it. Even if you know it's the right link, always preview it to make sure because you don't wanna spend money on ads and your link isn't working. Trust me, it's happened a few times, okay? So I just wanna save you the headache. And that's pretty much it, okay? Um, you can also, you know, mess with the thumbnail as well. So you can click on the thumbnail and choose which thumbnail you want um, for the actual video. So I can do something like this. Was This was a domino train. I tested the viral domino train that um, lies all the dominoes automatically for you. Um, but anyways, you can choose whatever thumbnail you want here, click save. And then one thing that you need to make sure you do is go ahead and come to this left side panel. And we're working on this one right here. What you want to do is now click on the second one and you want to do the exact same thing, but for all the other videos as well, it's very important that you do this. So go back to the text, you know, put your offer, go to the call to action, reselect all of the buttons again, add your URL, preview it and then do the exact same thing for the third one as well. And once you're done with all of that, now you can go to the bottom and click on publish all. So now it's creating our ad and congratulations. Now you have just created your first testing campaign, okay? So now you can just click on back to campaigns and it'll take you right back to this screen. Um, obviously I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because I'm not gonna run that. Um, but there you have it. That is my low budget TikTok ads testing strategy. It's a very simple strategy, but it works. And if you're gonna use my strategy, I highly recommend that you give it a chance for at least a month or two um, before you go ahead and move on to another YouTuber strategy, okay? Because a lot of the times with beginners, what happens is, is you're listening to too many people, you're trying too many different strategies. Try a strategy out for a little bit, you know, see how it works for you. And if it doesn't work, you wanna change something up, then you can go ahead and do that. Don't just do one test and then think, oh, this strategy doesn't work. You need to stick to something and just see it out. All right, you guys, so that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy it and that you took some value from it. That right there is my low budget TikTok ads testing strategy. It's an amazing strategy for beginners and it allows you to get in at a low cost. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys want to see from me next and I'll see you guys next time.